folks, I'm on site. We're ripping out old nasty tile countertops and replacing them with stone coat white marble, our most requested epoxy project ever. I went into the Home Depot to see how long it would take to get a guy to come out here, measure for granite. It was a nine week wait just to get measured. That's insane. I was able to demo the backsplash and the countertops in under two hours. I'm gonna show you just how to do it. Come along with me, folks. I'm gonna teach you step by step. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. You got this. I'm doing this project for free for my pal Travis and his beautiful wife, Ashley. They were some of my first friends when I moved up here to Oregon. He's a mechanic. He would come up to my house, fix my work truck you know, when I needed it desperately because I had to go do a job the next morning. Man, this guy is a class act and I'm here to help his kitchen out. As you can see, uh, it's seen better days. So we're gonna take that kitchen, rip it out and replace it with a beautiful white marble from Stone Coat Countertops. Guys, stay tuned. This video is gonna be epic and I can't wait to see their happy faces when I'm all done. And I tell them, no charge. Center point on that this. Week. All right, now I always draw like an overhead view of the kitchen. We're nearly done. Now I'm gonna drop my little windowsill. Sweet, so easy, I love it. Like a typical windowsill? Yeah. Can I hold that? Yeah, sure. Monster doesn't pay to get in the video, so. I would love to be sponsored by Monster. I enjoy three monsters per day minimum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I have everything I need. That's easy, that was an easy step. You guys, we're back in the shop. I've got my kitchen drawn up. It's time to start making some sawdust. Let's go to work. MDF is heavy. We have an inch and a half overhang on our new countertops over the cabinetry. So I'm gonna do a drop edge and I'm gonna make that one inch, which will give me a half inch of play when I go to install these countertops. I'll mark an X where I need a drop edge, where my edge will be. Okay, now my windowsill is only six inches, so I'll rip that one down. Six by 51, as long as it's 51 inches. I think it is. Praise me. I'm gonna go get my biscuit joiner. We're gonna seam this MDF together right now and then we'll we'll bondle that we'll seam this together and then we'll pour this as one piece you'll never know this was seamed together it'll look like a jumbo slab of white marble the customer wants a, a white and gray marble uh go figure that's your most popular color so i probably could have bet they were going to pick that it's our most popular installed color to date Every other job wants white marble. So learn that recipe, guys, if you're doing this for a living. Offer a few different variations of white marble because it's gonna be your most popular color, I guarantee it. Not that many cuts to get your countertops made though, really. We could wait nine weeks from Home Depot though, if you guys want. We, if you'd rather go laminate, we could wait nine weeks. By that time, the uh, you know, new colors will be in style. <laughs> 57 and a half. You always double check, man. Get your steps in. You could use a dowel jig or a, this is a biscuit joiner. They both do the same thing. I'm gonna make a little void, put some wood glue on our biscuits, then push these two pieces together, let that wood glue dry. It'll be now one solid piece of wood here. You have your red line. I'm lining my red line up with my, with my score mark, plunging in. I'll do the same thing over there. 
Add some Boom. wood glue to my biscuits, pound them in, squish that Boom. together, let it dry. I think I did it right. Oh, I did, by golly. All right, let's clean the dust out, get some wood glue. That step's over. Help me pick my next project. Let me know in the comments below. Option A, a 10 foot by four foot epoxy conference table with a giant river. Option B, replacing a cultured marble bathtub surround with epoxy wall panels. Or option C, 3D epoxy geode wall art. I'll teach you how to do it step by step. Now back to the video. You'd rather be more than not enough at this stage, so. It's nice and flush, just what we want. All right, we're gonna wood glue and pin gun my drop edge down. So I have it marked. I'm taking tight bond too. And do it a nice bead. I'm gonna let that wood glue dry. I'll be back when that's complete. We're gonna sand smooth. We're gonna apply Bondo to the front edge to that seam. Even though you have good wood glue penetration, you don't wanna see this seam. I'm gonna teach you the simple steps to follow to make sure these smooth epoxy edges do not show your laminated edge. The next step for perfect epoxy edges when making new countertops out of wood is to sand these flat. And I'm gonna mix up small batches of Bondo, thin layer to fill up this straight line there because you don't want that to go through. When the Bondo dries, I'll sand that back smooth around the top and the bottom and then it's time to apply the epoxy undercoat. This project is gonna be a very subtle white marble exotic pour. I'm quite excited about it. If you're new to working with Bondo, it's a really easy product to work with. Uh, consider it like Play-Doh on a timer. So you're gonna use this cream hardener. I start out with smaller batches. If I've just eyeballed it, I have a blob like that, and I put about that much hardener in. I can't tell you how much that is other than a visual on the ratio. So the more hardener you add, the faster that's gonna cure up. If you add just a little bit of hardener, but you make sure to mix it thoroughly, it will set up, but it'll, you'll have a tons of working time. So just start with small batches, add a little bit of hardener at a time, mix it up. You'll know when it starts to set up, it starts to thicken right on your gloves and right on your spatulas here. So just play with it. Don't mix up the whole dang batch. You'll regret that. Pro tip, little batches at a time. So I just do a small amount at first. I'm just doing a real thin layer. It's, I pretend I'm working on a vehicle. I always wanted to do that to tell you the truth. See, just barely any. But I want to make sure my 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 seam is completely covered. MDF makes really good substrate for working with epoxy. Simple. Boom. And I'm gonna radius these. I'll, I'll teach you guys how to hand radius. It's so doing your Bondo on your edges, guys, is, is a couple benefits. It'll keep that from ghosting through. And the cured Bondo sanded is a much better edge than rough sanded uh, MDF here. So when you have Bondo on this versus the MDF, you're, it's gonna be a smoother vertical edge before you put epoxy, which means it's gonna be a smoother prettier vertical edge after you put on epoxy. All right guys, I'm back. The Bondo is nice and hard. I'm gonna sand with 220 grit. Uh, I'll just use light pressure. I don't wanna take that Bondo all the way off. I just wanna make it nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna round over my sharp 90 degree corners using my sander.
right, I'm gonna round over any exposed 90 degree edge. I don't want the little ones to headbutt it. Where you don't do a radius is right here. I have a fridge and I have an oven. There's no need to round this over, why? Because you have a fridge sticking out here. Nobody's gonna headbutt that. But my windowsill and my outside corner over there and my wall cap, I'm gonna round all those edges. Let's go do that. After I use the sander to create a radius, I'll grab my trim router and I'll round over the top and bottom with an eighth inch round over bit. That really encourages the epoxy to flow nice and even over those vertical surfaces. Here we go, we're routering, we're sanding. I'm gonna mask up, let's go. You want to make sure to fill that top seam with some Bondo. I use wood glue and some biscuits to really hold this together. Now I'm going to fill this miniature void here with just a tiny amount of Bondo. Edges are done, nice and sanded, rounded over. It's time to apply two coats of our epoxy undercoat. I'm gonna apply a nice layer of Red Guard. This is the waterproofing roll-on membrane. When it dries, this MDF will be impervious to water. This stuff is legit, and I use it where I have a sink. So we're gonna just Red Guard this whole piece, and then I'm gonna put a nice white layer on the bottom side of my edges. Whenever you're doing undermount sinks, top mount sinks, it's very good practice to use Red Guard. I'm doing an exotic pour, white marble for this project, so I'm gonna create a tape dam. This step's optional, but it's a good practice to use whenever you're using the exotic pour method. What's the exotic pour method? That's where I set out the cups, I tint them individually, pour it back in a bucket. We use a little bit additional more epoxy for that pour. We go four to five ounces per square foot rather than three. So to keep those color techniques on your board, create a tape dam. I'll peel that tape dam about three to three and a half hours after I mix. I use two inch contractor's grade masking tape. You can use any tape you want. I'll do a couple rows, but I'll really focus on applying that nice and tight to the edge. Pour my exotic pour, and then I'll peel that later. I'll show you exactly how to do it. I don't need a trowel, don't need a brush. I'm gonna mix up two gallons of stone coat, art coat. Why am I choosing art coat? Because this is a white marble piece and art coat has the best UV resistance in the epoxy industry. You heard it here first or maybe for the hundredth time. And I'm only gonna use white metallic, white dye, and a wee bit of silver. It's gonna be very subtle, elegant, and beautiful. 
Here we go. Stone Coat Art Coat is a one-to-one -one epoxy that you mix for two minutes with a paddle mixer on a drill. If you don't have a paddle mixer on a drill, you can mix by hand. Just extend that mixing time. Use a paint stick by hand. I'm gonna pour in part B first. Midway through mixing, slow this bad boy down. Rub the sides and bottom to incorporate undermixed epoxy. Cling into the sides. I'll rub the whole side, top to bottom, on this speed right here. Just kind of scraping that side, knocking anything off. If you forget to do this, most times you're just fine, guys. It's just best practice to make sure you have a great mix. It's important to start out mixing correctly because that's your foundation. If you don't mix right, it may never cure. So mix with two minutes and you'll be good to go. Okay, now that the epoxy is mixed, I'll divide it up into separate mixing cups that I will then add colors or tint it. I'll go white dye and white metallic. For the white metallic, I'm gonna use our epoxy dispersion fluid. What is this stuff? What it does, it, it instantly incorporates any metallic powders and makes them wet and incorporates them into the epoxy super fast. It'll also add a selling detail. It'll give that exotic pour a unique look as the dispersion fluid fights with the dyes and the metallics. It's a really cool addition to your exotic pours. So I'll pour a little bit here. That's my white metallic powder. All right, folks, we're ready to make our exotic pour bucket. This is exciting. I've never made such a subtle white marble. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think these colors are gonna work or flop? Let me know. A, they're gonna work. B, Mitch, what were you thinking? Add more colors. I'm doing what my customer wants, guys. Come on, here we go. This silver can take over, so that's why, you know, I kept myself, I limited myself to one 12 ounce uh, uh, soda uh, uh, drink of epoxy, of silver. So we're gonna take our tinted epoxy and go back into this big bucket. Then we're taking that big bucket and pouring it out on our countertop. Project nearly complete. The exotic pour method is perfect for first time epoxy users. Guys, just follow along with me. Your countertop will turn out sweet. those exotic pores from over incorporating. Pour it down the side like that, see that? And when you go to pour this out, it'll meet this super under mix section, and give, you so, whoop, and give you some pretty, pretty effects. sucks it down, right? That does some cool stuff as well. Get in there. That's no, okay, over there. Come on. All right, let's go. Really there, man. Let's do this. Smear the blobs around. That's not the biggest deal. It's about to get covered up right now, but I do, rather than leave polka dots, I'll kind of just smear that. I like saying smear. The only rule right now, guys, don't mix that up. You're gonna make it look like mud. It'll become the same color. I'm gonna make striated stacked stone. It's my favorite. I do it every time. I'm sorry, but it looks the most natural to me. I have a sink right here. I'm leaving it in there. I don't worry about it. I'm gonna cut that later. I'm grabbing my exotic pour bucket and I'll go kind of in the front third and the back third. And I'll let this bad boy self-level. Here we go. This is why you guys watch. Here we go. I'm gonna let that 
yourself level out. Whew. Man, these are looking so good. That wall cap is beautiful. Golly, I don't know which one my favorite is. That windowsill is gonna be sweet. All these are looking really good, and I did them in two separate batches to make your exotic pours match bucket after bucket. Just mix up the same ratio of colors, keeping those in mind from your first one. The heat from your torch or your heat gun will warm the epoxy and help it self-level. Now that the epoxy's out of my buckets and on the countertop, it has hours to self-level. Now you can take a step back, get this piece right the way you want it. All these spots here are continuing to close up. They're closing up right as we speak. I'm gonna let this epoxy self-level out. I'll get rid of the air bubbles by using my blowtorch. I'll hold that an inch or so from the surface and I'll sweep this project a couple times. That warms it up, it helps it flow. But the most important thing is it's removing the air I've incorporated while mixing all those colors and mixing up with my drill. Propane torch works best. Second best is your heat gun. And third, last, but extremely least, is your blow dryer. It will work, but guys, you're gonna be blow drying your top for an extended period of time. Yeah, it's nice, dude. It's really pretty, isn't it? Get any shots for me, Nathan. You're doing really, really good. Appreciate you. If you have little stubborn areas like this, this would hit. To encourage this, just touch it. Break up that surface tension. Flows like butter. Make any dry areas wet, and the epoxy flows really well. Very pretty, man. See this section right here? That was one of the blobs I ran down the side where it stayed under mixed. I love that part right there. I am digging it. And you'll see this sort of look in natural slabs where you have a vein of one mineral doing a certain design that's stacked right up on top of another section that's doing a completely different look but in the same color family. All right, guys, this thing is looking perfect. I'm gonna leave it be. I'm leaving my tape dam up for a couple more hours. I'll be back to show you how to remove this tape for perfect edges. I'm gonna make my customer a hot plate using this silicone mold. I'm just gonna pour my exotic pour right into this, put some little feet on it, then they could put it on their dining table or whatever, it'll match their countertops, but it'll be a nice thing to set like a big hot serving dish on that you don't want to hurt your dining table. It's time to peel this tape down. All I'm doing is gonna rip that tape and I'm gonna pull down and away from the top of my project. That'll encourage the epoxy to start flowing. Once the tape's removed and it's discarded, I'll take my gloved fingers and encourage any dry spots to get wet with that flowing epoxy. Make sure they're all nice and wet. Then the remaining epoxy, well, it's nice and thick by this point. It's been over three hours since we mixed. It's thickened up, it's starting to gel, but it will still flow nicely over those edges. I rubbed my whole hand across that, but now my, my color techniques are hanging over that front. It's exactly what you want. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my epoxy covered fingers and rubbing the underside of this front and side edge. 
What does that do? That envelops this whole edge with epoxy and it protects it. If you're doing this in your home and you have vents above you, turn off your AC. The blowing air over cured epoxy can make it cured rippled. That's a pro tip. Kill the AC and heater as your epoxy cures for that first 12 to 18 hours. You can have a heater in the room. Just have it down at your feet level, pointing away from the countertop. Just coating that bottom edge really well. And then we're calling it a day, guys. All right. I'm really happy with how subtle and elegant these turned out. It's exactly what I was looking for. I'll be back tomorrow to lightly sand with 220 grit and apply the ultimate top coat. I'm gonna take them into the wood shop where I can get dusty. Smoothed out all my drips, but left epoxy on this. It makes it really easy to clean protects that bottom from moisture. It's time for the ultimate top coat. Step one, I'm gonna lightly sand with 220 grit. I'll remove the lint from my roller covers with some masking tape. These are quarter inch nap microfiber rollers. I have at least three roller frames, one wet roller to apply the material and two to remove it off to make that finish nice and tight and looking like you sprayed it on. I'm gonna sand the surface, I'll sand the edges. We'll wipe clean with some paper towels and then it's time to mix up the ultimate top coat and then we'll add a little bit of high quality H2O that's epoxy psych that wasn't epoxy it's just water I'm teasing you I'm all good don't drink the epoxy now we're gonna pour in part B of our ultimate top coat this product brings your countertops to the next level of ultimate durability. My buddies Travis and Ashley have young children and so do I and I know what they can do. My son stabs the dining table with his fork after every bite and it's still holding up like crazy. I've removed Sharpie off the ultimate top coat. I've removed dried Kool-Aid, not that my wife left dried Kool-Aid. Uh, she's innocent, always. God, I love you. All right, that's after mixing with a little bit of water. It's pretty thick. I want to go latex paint consistency, so I'm going to add a little bit of this water. Add a little bit at a time. You can always add more. You know what my brother says. Uh, you can always add more, but you can't take any out. You know, that's how it works. I'm going to go a hair more, guys, just a little bit. Like so. I have uh, quite a bit of square footage, so I just mixed up my whole batch. So completely saturate your roller and apply it quite heavy. And then we're gonna come back and remove material off the project with this wet roller. But right now I'm focusing on applying it heavy. Just working my way down the project. I'll go hit my edges. I'll apply heavy and then I'll work to a section I just applied the product to kind of feather those two together just like so with my wet roller and light pressure i'm making that surface uniform before i grab that dry roller all right now using a fresh clean delinted dry roller we're gonna remove some material off this top now barely any pressure i'm using just letting this roller glide rod right across the surface and i'm keeping the pressure towards the elbow or frame of that roller just going back and forth now one more dry roll and i'm going to go the same direction the whole way and then i'll pick it up go about halfway over barely feathering it folks real gentle man that's looking sick i'm gonna let this dry we're gonna be ready to install Tomorrow, I'll be back to do that. We're heading off site. We're gonna demo some tile, rip out tile backsplash, get it ready for our countertops, cut out the sink, install the same day. The customer will be using these countertops tomorrow, cooking supper. Let's do this. I'm gonna go rest. I'm exhausted and my neck's out. See you tomorrow. Guys, we're on site. It's time to rip out an old tile kitchen. I start with the backsplash, make that mess down. Then I work with the surface. I'm also gonna rip out this old sink 
and replace it. So I'm gonna de-plumb the sink. I'll show you how to do that. And guys, not every kitchen is lucky enough to have a built-in mixer that you can't remove from the countertop. It's gonna live there permanently. Not anymore, we're gonna rip this thing out. It hasn't even worked for years. I've even seen like permanent barbecue grills installed in somebody's tile kitchen. It's insane why you would barbecue inside your house, but I've seen it. First things first, we're covering up this floor. You don't wanna mess up your customer or your wife's pretty kitchen floor. Trust me. I'm covering the floor with the RAM boards. You could pick this stuff up at the Home Depot or any hardware store. It's impervious to water. It's a really good floor covering. Epoxy will not saturate through it, neither will water. Some good stuff. First things first, when de-plumbing a sink, you're gonna hit your two valves, kill those, and make sure the water's off. Sometimes on older sinks, that hot water valve will lose its rubber gasket. You think it's off, you de-plumb it, and then it's gonna be a fire hydrant spraying in your face underneath the sink cabinet till whoever's here to help you shuts off the main water valve. Don't do that. We're gonna turn these off. Simple new valves, that's good, they'll probably be just fine. We're good. Hot's off, cold's off. We can now take apart the faucet. We've got a garbage disposal your P-trap, and your two uh, water supplies, hot and cold. Pop that off. Pop this off. I usually use La Baby because it's easier to get my giant paws in here with them. There goes that one. That's out. Sometimes you can get a flat bar underneath that plywood and pry it up. It just depends if they use screws or nails. That can be the cleanest demo. And the goal to, right now is to keep the sheetrock intact, but that oh, sometimes can't happen. And sometimes the sheetrock will come along with the backsplash. That's okay, we're gonna put tile back up so you could patch in the sheetrock real easy. What I don't wanna do is damage the sheetrock past where my tile is. Perfect, it's gonna come right off. It's gonna be messy, but the sheetrock will be intact. Now that I've got a little bit done, I know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna bash away, get it to chew up into little pieces, and then just pull it off the wall, scoop all this mess into a bucket, yard it out in the truck. The bottom is probably gonna demo the same exact way. Let's do this, we got some work ahead of us. Let's do it. I'm gonna get my eyes on, actually. Don't forget your eye goggles. Safety never takes a day off here at Stunk Oak Countertops. It's really foggy. <laughs> Can you see, bro? No, I can't. <laughs> I love football, I was good at it. The delicate part of this whole job is this front. Normally we have a, a, a board here that extends your front tiles. So I'm gonna take caution in removing that so I don't damage my cabinet.
My bear paws did it. Okay, clear the way. you want. I just pop that front edge, got two bars under there, lift it up, full thing coming up in one piece. You can see the chicken wire. All they used is staples to put the chicken wire down. Sometimes they screw it and then, then this comes out like the backsplash in pieces. Now can I lift it? Yes. Who wants a tile countertop? <laughs> demo is complete. Now it's time to clean up our dusty mess. The tile's out of here. I'm gonna rip up this plywood decking. It's got some water damage and it's also about a half inch thick and I want it three quarters so my drop edge doesn't hit any of my cupboards and it doesn't hit this dishwasher. I'm just gonna put strips in. That, that way I can secure my countertops right through my strips. There's, it's not necessary to have it fully decked the way it is here. So the next step, I'm gonna tear out the plywood. I'll clean up. Okay, man, I'll grab the vacuum. We'll get all these crumbs out of here. Demo is complete. That's the hardest part of the project. And it took us about an hour and a half to completely rip out this kitchen. Putting it back together is gonna be much quicker. I'm gonna pin nail some three quarter inch thick three inch wide strips of MDF. I have a drop edge on our countertop. That way my drop edge doesn't hit stuff like this. We'll be, we'll be clear of that. And it also will be clear of our dishwasher. I'll go grab those strips. So I'm going a real skinny build up strip right where my sink is. That's way I have enough room to cut out that sink hole and my sink will fit without having a notch underneath here. I've done this enough times. Don't put a three inch strip front and back on your sink basin. Three inch strips are gonna go everywhere else. On, on the picture, right? Picture. <laughs> right I on. love you. <laughs> and you have an overhang. That's not right. I can like <laughs> so you see what's going on here? We have a gap in the front, but tight in the back. I'll show you how I fix that. I'm gonna take a half of an inch off. So describe that line, guys. You can, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm gonna use my finger as a guide. So I'll rub my thumb right across my wall. That's my scribe line. I'm gonna protect my piece a little bit where my saw is gonna go. This is a really pretty marble. I love how subtle it is. It's not too loud, you know. That's what a lot of people want. Ooh, there's a bird. That was squirrel syndrome. I just was about to say that. Nice. There's my sink template. 
That is 62, 61 and 5 eighths. Now I'll find some. Oh, look at that. It marked center for me. I appreciate that. So the front of my cut will be at three and three quarters. Let me double check that. It should work. One time I was templating, uh, turning in a granite template. And at that time I would have to glue this template on there so they knew they were doing the right thing, right? And I'm driving my template into Medford to be turned in because the truck picks it up and drives it up to Portland where it's fabricated. And my template blows out of the truck on the bridge over the Rogue River on High Five. So I pass the bridge, I pull over, I'm running back. It's colder than heck, which made my template material brittle. And just this is the time a semi hits it and it breaks into a thousand pieces right, in front, right before my eyes. How much does it cost? The template, it's not the cost. It was the time. Because I drove all the way to Klamath to make that template. I had to drive back to Klamath and make it again. Boom, there's my cutout. Best way to remove your top mount sinkhole, start out with a pilot drill bit. I'm gonna drill all four corners then use my jigsaw to follow the line. I'm gonna use silicone around the perimeter of my sink. That's gonna seal water from getting in there, but I wanna be extra careful, and I'm gonna red guard or waterproof my exposed MDF. Time to screw these tops in. I'm using a screw that I know will not punch through my top. That's the most important part of screwing your tops in. Don't use a screw that goes all the way through to the top. That'd be a bad day. inches, two inches, perfect. I mean, I'm gonna hold my straight edge here to my jam. Mark both sides. Yep, for a good eight. She goes, this is how I spray, this is how I water my plants. And she takes her faucet and goes psh, psh. So I'm gonna have a tiny slope so the water comes back to the countertop and not to my wood. Even though I will seal this up when we're done. That's pretty good, all right. Template material. This stuff will get you out of a bind really quickly. This will help me scribe this really unique cut that I'm working with over here. Look at this. I have this brick work or uh, masonry work and I have to notch a little dog ear around here. So I'm gonna get that cut templated and then put that onto my board, take it outside and give it a cut. Should slide right into place. I guess that radius is about that sharp. You just need to score the template material. Bada bing, bada boom. Really cool stuff. There it is, I felt some in the cut. Ow. Two has become one.
bingo, that's what I need to do right there. Just hold it for a couple seconds. Get a little rub, a little pat pat. That's my cut. Okay, cut's really easy. I'm just letting that blade do all the work. I'm barely pushing forward. Just take your time when you do stuff like this, guys. Don't wanna mess it up. That silicone will set up in about 15, 20 minutes where when you bump it, it won't move. It's like the 30 minute quick dry stuff. So Nathan, don't bump that. It's perfect. You're in for a special treat. I'm gonna show you my DIY method to apply subway tile to this beautiful white marble countertop job. It's gonna really tie the room together. I'm gonna hook up my um, metal trim goes up first. Let's see. This is what I like to use right here to affix my tile to the wall, especially when your sheetrock's in real nice shape. I'll be using a quarter inch V notch trowel to affix my tile to the wall. This stuff's really nice. It works really good for vertical backsplash just like this and it comes pre-mixed. You do not need to mix it, it's ready to rock and roll. And I'm just gonna trowel a small working section at a time because you don't wanna let this start skimming over and setting up before you have time to get your tiles on there. It's called back buttering. You add some mud to the wall, mud to your tile, the puppy ain't coming off. Working our way down, bro. We'll start flying now. So yeah, this Omni Grip is what I use, and I use this notch trowel. And then you just trowel it on, and then you trowel the back of the tile, and then it, it almost suction cups. Like, these are solid. And you just mm -hmm. have all the little X things to keep in yep. space. Yep. So tomorrow we'll come back with the grout, which I'll pick that darker one. Yeah. And then you, that's not hard at all. You just smear that all in, fill it. And then you have a tool that scrapes most of it off. We'll be getting out of your hair here pretty soon. You'll have one of the house. Full yeah. rain again. All right. Yeah, I had the, you missed the show last night. I was here till about 630 and I had my tunes on singing. <laughs> so I, really? I had never done the tile trim like this. Uh -huh. So I literally, I tried to do my method. I go, well, that was a fail. Tried to do another <laughs> method. I said, that was a fail. So I said, hmm, what would I do? Oh, YouTube, YouTube it. <laughs> Guy taught me, <laughs> ran to Home Depot and did it, did it like a pro. That's awesome. So YouTube teaches everything. I hope you're rolling. Absolutely. Good job. <laughs> Good work. Cause that's going in the video. <laughs> That looks like it's a little bit of an angle too. So that's what I did. That's what I did. 
you show me how you water. It's so funny. All right, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we'll leave the door unlocked. You can leave the door unlocked. Just Copy. You're good. All right, Ash. Thank you. A good day. Thank you. Those guys helped me out so much in my pickup when I was in construction. I never had enough money to buy real fancy pickups, so I was always getting the 10-year-old rig and trying to make do with it. And he's a mobile mechanic. That's how I met him. And he, would, he came out once when I was stranded and got me moving again. He's a good dude, so it's, I'm not charging him a single cent for this job. Not even for materials. Boom, boy. I'm becoming a professional. You can tile your backsplash. It's really not that hard. In fact, it's a ton of fun. I'm putting uh, Play-Doh on the wall and then squishing stuff to it. It's easy, you can rent a tile saw for a, a minimal investment, probably under 100 bucks a day to rent a really high quality tile saw. I would recommend that. It makes the cuts super simple. You literally put it there, push back. It's not hard guys, you can do this. All right folks, we're back and it's final cleanup day. I'm gonna grout the tile. We'll reinstall this sink. We're gonna do all the finishing details and show you what this job looks like, all complete. First step, I'm gonna remove all my grout spacers, clean off any of the tiles of any of my mud that I missed. I tried to do it pretty clean, but there's a little bit of stuff. So I'll do that, and then it's time to mix up some grout. No real tricks on removing spacers. Time to mix some grout. I have some water in my bucket. I'm gonna add in about half of this bag. I'll get that stirred up and then add some more water. Mix thoroughly, then it's time to apply that grout. Doing grout is DIY friendly. Grout mix is so easy. Just gotta know a few steps and go at it. Use YouTube to teach yourself practically anything you want nowadays. So this is really soupy. You could add too much water really quickly with grout. Okay, this is good now. Serious, let's go. I'll use the tip of my trowel here. This trowel is made for doing grout. It's rubberized, so it has some give. It has this sharp edge to then come back and clean it off when it's that time. But right now I'm focused on taking the tip of my trowel and pushing that grout into the grout joint so it's nice and full. And then we'll come back and clean it off. So I'm not gonna fill my bottom gap. I'm gonna use a caulking there that's flexible. That keeps that from uh, cracking later on and coming away and leaving that a void. Because over time, you're gonna have expansion and contraction of the countertop, and that's where the, top, the grout will crack and chip away. So you don't want that. sponges are gonna be your best friend. I'd recommend having a few on hand because we're gonna just start wiping this tile now. I'm not really applying tons of pressure here. I'm just letting my sponge glide across these tiles. And I'll probably switch my water two, three times during this whole process.
what I'm paying attention to is just how even the grout is and it's looking perfect. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. <sighs> Adorable. Yes. Be sure to use the flexible grout in a caulking tube for this bottom row. It's going to keep that grout from crumbling away as the seasons change. Fingertip and what I'm pushing as much sealant into that grout line as I can and wiping at the same time, leaving behind a nice clean line. And as our grout dries, it's gonna be more this color. It's gonna look really, really good. It matches my gray almost perfectly, dude. Heck of a grout pick. See now, this is almost like a silicone. It pretty much is siliconized grout. So that's why we did this first and not that, because we would have been getting real grout all in that. I'm gonna run a row of tape, nice and tight to the bottom and right close to that tile. That makes cleanup nice and easy. The siliconized grout is like a very thick polyurethane style silicone, so it can get pretty dang messy. So for the safest bet, especially when you're not a pro at caulking, use some tape. Take your finger and I'm pushing in as hard as I can wanting to fill that whole gap with this glue just like it's grout. Peel the top first. Clean. I'm gonna tape off the perimeter of where my sink's gonna sit. Rather than just rely on a bead of silicone here where the sink lip hits my countertop, I'm gonna put a heavy bead of silicone underneath this lip and then embed my sink right into that caulking, the silicone, let it ooze out on top of my tape. I'll tool it off, clean it off. That thing isn't gonna go anywhere and it's not gonna leak. Back up. I'm going with clear. Clear would be the best bet. I'm using my finger as a straight edge right along that edge. <laughs> nice! get most of it out and then I'll spray a towel with some alcohol and wipe it on the stainless steel. It's so good. Like it's a, it's unbelievably good. Like, oh yeah. I'm going to peel away from my metal the whole way around. Once I get it started, you can see I'm peeling away. It's been a pleasure working in my friend's home and showing you folks some simple to follow steps to renew your worn out kitchen with Stone Coat Epoxy. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions, start out with Hey Mitch. I'll be sure to answer 
as my way of saying thanks for making it to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got some awesome content coming your way. Thanks for watching, everybody. And don't forget, from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. And I'll see you on the next video.